Wrangler Star. While ram pumps and chainsaws, axe heads are interesting. Someone has to feed the family. Each Monday, I'll be uploading a video to tell you a little bit about homesteading from a woman's perspective. I will cover topics ranging from homeschooling, food preservation, gardening, those types of things. While I can run a, a chainsaw, there's other things to talk about too. <laughs> Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make a soft lemon cheese. The ingredients you will need for the soft lemon cheese are half a gallon of non-homogenized whole milk, a quarter cup lemon juice, herbs or spices. Today I'll be using fresh chives and basil. Any salt will do. You don't need special cheese salt. Butter muslin, similar to a cheesecloth, but finer weave. A thermometer. Measuring cup. Sieve or colander. Medium sized bowl. Slotted spoon. Medium saucepan. We'll start by pouring one half gallon of milk into the saucepan. Turn it to medium low heat. Stir frequently so it doesn't scald. Heat the milk to between 175 and 200 degrees. While your milk is heating, put the sieve in the bowl and cover it with the butter cloth. Mr. Wrangler Star loves chives, so we're going to add them to the cheese today. Don't overheat your milk because the proteins will become denatured and your curds and whey will not separate. And when that happens, you won't have any cheese. So when you hit between 185 and 200 degrees, go ahead, turn the heat off, add your quarter cup of lemon juice, stir well, and let it sit for 15 minutes. So when you add the lemon juice, it's an acid and it will call, cause the curds and whey to separate, and that's what you want for the cheese. If you use real lemons, the acidity can vary, so sometimes you need to add a little bit of extra. As a master food preserver, I'm happy to answer questions about food safety and food preservation. Each week I'll select three subscriber questions and answer them in next week's video. If you'd like to submit a question, please leave it in the comment section of that particular week's video. When the time is over, go ahead and pour the curds and whey. Curds on top, whey in the bottom. If they did not separate, go ahead and add more lemon juice. Let it sit a couple of minutes and it should go ahead and separate at that point. So go ahead and squeeze some of the liquid out. You're going to let it drain for about one hour. You can also hang it up so that the pressure, or you can just let it sit in the sieve. You can season it now or after it's all done draining. We'll go ahead and mix our seasonings in now. Then it'll be mixed through the cheese. Just make it a taste that you like. Don't throw away your butter muslin because you can wash it and reuse it. So don't throw away the whey because you can use it for a number of different things. Um, it's protein, so you can use it like in smoothies and shakes as a protein powder. You can throw it in your compost. Um, a lot of people feed it to their pigs. And I'm sure there's a lot of other uses, but don't throw it away. So after about an hour to two hours, it's time to remove your cheese. Ta-da! There's two different things you can do. You can either slice it, or you can kind of mix it up if you haven't added your herbs and salt yet. Put it on a little bread, and enjoy. <laughs> Could use some more flavoring. So I have three subscriber questions for you. Uh, the first one, what is a master food preserver? A master food preserver is someone who has gone through some training and then volunteers hours back. The training consists of learning about canning, pressure canning, food dehydration, cheese making, sauerkrauts, jams and jellies, ex food safety. How long can uh, canned fruits and vegetables last in the pantry? 
Uh, they can last for a long time, but the quality goes down. So it's not a food safety issue, but it's a quality issue. The nutrients become less, the taste becomes off. You might not want to have beans that are five years old. This question has two parts. What's your favorite part of homesteading and your least favorite? <laughs> I can't, it's too long an answer. <laughs> My favorite part of homesteading is living out here and just the peace and quiet that is out here. I get to spend time with my two favorite people in the world and it's just lovely. It's just lovely. It's a slower pace. My least favorite is probably, I don't know, um, driving. We have to drive a lot. Oftentimes we don't have internet and oftentimes we don't have um, cell phones so sometimes that can be a little tricky and um, even when you don't feel like starting a fire you still have to do it even when you don't feel like doing some things you still have to